excited about something we're talking about, give us a call on our call-in number, 989-402-5414. So you can talk with our coach, Deb, who's been coaching for six years. Without further ado, here's our host, Deb. Oops, it helps when you turn on your microphone, doesn't it? <laughs> Woo, it's Monday. Hey, thank you so much for being here with me today. It is so nice outside. It was it's really hard to be in inside here. And I think as soon as we're finished, I'm gonna go for a W A L K with my dog Dylan. I can't say that word because he'll be all excited. In fact, he's kind of catching on to the spelling. So um I hope you had a great weekend. I did. I worked on my house. I sat outside for a little while, had a couple glasses of wine, which I have not been doing. And, um, just, it was really nice. And the Indian, I mean, the Tigers won. Oop, Freudian slip there. I'm, I grew up in Ohio. So, you know, I still kind of cheer for the Indians, except when they're, they're rooting, except for when they're playing the Tigers then I have to cheer for the Tigers. So my guest today, I want to tell you a little bit about him before he calls in. His name is Christopher Paris. He is a psychic, and I'm going to let him tell you all the details of how he found out he was psychic and all that stuff because it's a pretty interesting story. But I met him. This is this is what happens if you leave yourself open. I was looking for a psychic several years ago, like three maybe four, to be on my show. And I asked this one lady, and she said that she couldn't, but she knew somebody that that could. And she gave me Christopher's name and number. And ever since then, we've been in touch. And here he is. This is Christopher Paris. Hello. Hi. Hello. There you are. How you doing? How are you? I'm Pretty good. Good. I was just talking a little bit about we how we met because I think it's so interesting when you allow when you allow people to come into your life and don't chase after them how wonderful it is and I I consider you one of my pretty good friends. I hope that you feel the same way. Absolutely, Deb. Yes, and I totally agree in reference to the synchronicity of people showing up in our lives. Um, I mean, my, um, my my business, New Beginnings, has been a living legacy to that. It really has. I mean, it's been such a blessing to me and everybody that's been touched by the work that we do there. And uh, I hope we really always get a chance to do that. We're going on our fifth year now. That's that's great. So that's interesting because I'm going on my fourth year. No, it has been. It was four years in December. I'm going on my fifth year with the radio show and the fourth year with the radio station. So kind of, again, synchronistic. It was time for those things, I guess. Well, <laughs> well here, here, here's another example of that synchronicity because this is our fifth year in existence. And our fourth year in the facility that we're at right now. So, <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? We want to hear a little bit more about eerie synchronicity. Uh, as you know, we talked about earlier, Deb, today's my late brother's birthday. Um, he passed away in 2005. Um, his name was Tommy. Um, so today being his birthday, okay, I had no idea that the lawn service guy was actually going to show up. It's a, a new lawn service guy that my landlord set me up with. And I go out there to talk with him, and I was, you know, hi, how you doing? My name is Christopher. And this guy just turns around and says, hi, my name is Tommy. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> that gave me goosebumps. Aw. I took that as a sign, yep. Yep, that is really nice. I love stuff like that. That's really cool. So um, tell us – Tell us a little bit about you. I know people are really interested and fascinated by psychics, how they found out they were psychics, and what mm-hmm. they do now. And will you just share a little bit? Absolutely. Well, you see, uh, my family has somewhat of a background in um, traditional forms of mysticism. Um, we have a touch of gypsy heritage in, in my family, which is ironic because my wife has that as well. Um, my mother read cards. My grandmother read cards. 
the men in our in our society in our culture and in our uh, in our family structure really didn't participate too much in that um there had always been people that had told my mother that she was going to be giving birth to a gifted child before i was actually even born um but i you know even in my beginning years i didn't take it very seriously i was too bent on using logic and intellect you know the 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 realm of uh you know confined thinking that society wants to impose upon us and and i was i was fine with that until one time uh, me and a friend we drove up through new england and again the law of synchronicity and how it works we uh got lost quote unquote and wound up in um this little rural village where there was a bed and breakfast and i said well look there's a bed and breakfast right there it looks like they have room why don't we stay here so we did and uh, and we got up the next morning. We asked uh, what kind of things there were to do around the area. <clears throat> and one of the things that the clerk down at the desk suggested was that we check out this little candle shop. Had a woman in there from um, somewhere in Eastern Europe, uh, Lithuania, I, I believe it was, that, that did readings. And I went in there and got a reading, and she told me some profound information about myself. I mean, just things that there's no way she could possibly know, and it really awakened me in a way that I hadn't been before, even though I had been exposed to, um, you know, some degree of mysticism and, and metaphysical arts before that. But she told me a lot about myself. She told me that within a few years beyond that point, that I would wind up uh, being a spiritual leader and, um, you know, on my path that one day having a shop like she has, which is what I have now. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, that's funny. Huh? A, mm-hmm. You know, and years ago, let me just think how long ago. Wow. Probably 40 years ago. I, um, it's weird I can remember back that far, to tell you the truth. Um, <laughs> I, my friends, I had never been to a psychic. And I always was just a little bit, but, you know, everybody would poo-poo it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but it would be like my psychicness came to me in... Um, dreams. It was usually when mm -hmm. I was asleep and when I'd wake up, I'd know what happened, which is mm -hmm. strange. But anyway, um, I, so I was, that was when I was younger. So I was in California and the same things had been happening to me mm, probably since I was like 10 or 12. I can remember that happening. And um, I was in California and for my birthday, my friends went together and got me a psychic reading and I went mm -hmm. reluctantly because, you know, I was raised Catholic and that was against the Catholic religion. And I think that's why people kind of poo pooed it, you know, as Deb be quiet, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And so, um, I went and she told me that I had a very dark blue aura, like she had not ever seen before. I've never had anybody else tell me that before, just her, and or since actually. And she told me that she sees a, a saw a blue butterfly coming from within me later in my life, and she sees people, women. But she didn't say that right away. She saw people listening to what I had to say, and blue <laughs> butterflies were coming from my mouth, and that it was mostly women in the audience. Interesting. Yes. You know, uh, an yet another synchronicity, I don't know if you uh, were aware of this uh, as of today or not, but the butterfly happens to be our logo. Um, for new no. beginnings. No. Oh, again, I got <laughs> yeah. goosebumps. Wow, <laughs> how weird is that? I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, it's kind of funny too because the original logo was going to be an owl, you know, as a symbol for mystical knowledge and, and wisdom. Um, but then my my wife said, "Well, you know." We're called New Beginnings, and what's more symbolic of a new beginning mm -hmm. than a butterfly emerging from its cocoon? Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, isn't that something? Yep. Huh. Yeah, I don't believe in coincidences. No, no. And we were obviously meant to meet. I, I just, I, all, 
I feel very connected to you. And whether it's from a past life or whatever, I feel like maybe you could have been my brother. Interesting. Very interesting that you'd come up with that concept on the day that uh, the birthday of my brother, too. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yet again. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. My eyes are kind of watering. <laughs> oh, I love when this kind of stuff happens. So um, you you have been doing uh, readings, and what kind of readings do you do? Um, I specialize in readings that cover issues concerning past, present, and future, of course. Um, those tend to be the 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 best in reference to spiritual advisory. Um, what will happen in a past, present, future reading um, is, of course, I will give a person insight on what they've been through, um, you know, deciphering different words and, and sentiments to put to some of the experiences that they may have, experiences that have shaped them, experiences that they've learned from, maybe ones that they haven't learned from. And ultimately, that brings us to the point of where they're at and what kind of aspirations they currently have and what type of dilemmas they might need to overcome. Um, and then, of course, we touch upon the future. But when we touch upon the future, it's never a fortune telling. I always, I always reinforce that. I want everyone to know that it's not a fortune telling. It's not something that is alleviating you of your personal responsibility. No, in fact, it's re reinforcing your need to be accountable for your own responsibilities. I mean, ultimately, when I give a person information about the future, it's more of a forecast indicating what kind of conditions uh, lie ahead that they're going to face and what they can do about it in the meantime or when they're faced with them. Um, I, I mean, I, the, I use cards. Uh, that's one of the methods that I use, but I also incorporate intuitive clairvoyancy. The, the modality of the type of reading that someone gives is nowhere near as important as the person giving it. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's astrology or cards or runes or whether it's uh, psychic visions and such. You know, what's important is that you're coming from the right place of intention. And that intention should be to help enlighten people to their personal truth. And that's really what it's all about. Say, that's pretty... Um pretty sincere and pretty dynamic to say that again, you want to enlighten people. Yeah. Enlighten people to their own personal truth and, own personal and different truth. ways, different ways of viewing uh, their personal truth. You know what I mean? Because I mean, let's face it. All of us have issues of dealing with ego, no matter who we are, no matter where we come from, no matter how spiritually enlightened we're going to, we become, there, there's always going to be issues of ego that we have. Um, and, and ultimately a reading exposes further truth onto, you know, what your ego is compelling you to do or not to do and how you can better that for yourself and everyone around you. I mean, there, there's even a prayer that I say before I give a reading, you know, may this be for the good of everyone involved mm -hmm. is generally the sentiment. You know, you, it's not, it's not about gaining power over other people because you have knowledge that they didn't come across because they didn't visit a psychic. I mean, it, it's not about that. It's about empowering yourself with personal knowledge about how it is that you can live more in conjunction with your own spiritual truths. Right. So there's a lot of people now I see uh, that I've observed, observed lately that are coming, that are searching more for their own spiritual truth. I think even like in the last six months of months of I'm having a hard time talking today. Six months <laughs> I've had uh, people that I never thought would come sit down and talk with me. Come sit down and talk with me. Do you see something happening in our earth, in our area, or something that's causing? Oh, that? I tell you what, it's it's more on a global level, Deb. It really oh, is. Good. Um, I, I I really think. Okay, <clears throat> the thing about it is is. The first reading that I ever got when I talked about um, supposedly getting lost up in um, New England and mm -hmm. had to go to the bed and breakfast to stay, uh, when I got a re reading from that lady, that was back in 1992. Um, you know, certain things that she talked about uh, are still unfolding till this day. Um, it's so important to record what it is that you gain as far as insight out of a reading. But yes, I mean... Since we opened up, I mean, it's, it's been absolutely phenomenal as to how many people 
of interest in paranormal and, and supernatural occurrences. 